In this video, we'll talk about chronic pancreatitis. Chronic pancreatitis refers to the long-term pathological fibroinflammatory changes in the pancreas. Two words are very important, long-term and fibroinflammatory changes. So, this particular uh, disease is associated with fibrosis, mononuclear cell infiltration which lead to inflammation and oxidative stress. Also, there could be genetic un components underneath chronic pancreatitis. One of the most common factor is basically CFTR gene mutation. CFTR mutation can lead to altered chloride and bicarb uh, bicarbonate secretion into the pancreatic ducts that results in the pancreatic secretion which is more thickened and it, it can obstruct the pancreatic ducts. One of the most common reason for long, uh, chronic pancreatitis is long-term exposure to alcohol and cigarette smoke. There are many other uh, reasons but these two are the most prevalent ones. So let us talk about the hereditary uh, pancreatitis which might lead to the chronic pancreatitis and this is extremely rare but it's often leads to, uh, often it is due to the gene mutations. One of the common factor is CFTR. CFTR maintains the chloride and bicarbonate homeostasis into the pancreatic ductal system. And in case of CFTR mutation, this homeostasis is altered, which lead to problems with pancreatic secretion and ultimately lead to chronic pancreatitis. This is only one example. There are many other mutations which are known. For example, PRSS1, which basically encodes for uh, trypsinogen is another gene which is often mutated in case of chronic pancreatitis. Similarly, SPINK1 which is a serine protease inhibitor, also uh, CASR which is basically a cal calcium sensing receptor etc can also lead to uh, or could be the underlying cause of chronic pancreatitis. Now let's talk about the structural changes that occurs in in the pancreas due the course of chronic pancreatitis. So one of the most common thing is basically abnormal pancreatic duct. So one can clearly understand these ducts look very swollen and abnormal. And inside those dilated ducts, there are stones. There could be pseudo aneurysm and bleeding. There could be biliary obstruction, venous thrombosis, calcification of the pancreatic of the specific portion of the pancreatic ducts. Also there could be pseudocyst formation. All of these structural anomalies are associated with chronic pancreatitis. Now let's talk about the pain. So there are primary and secondary reason of pain. In case of primary, the duct obstruction and tissue hypertension leads to the pain. Active inflammation is another factor which is often lead to uh, inflammation and pain. Other than that, tissue ischemia and bunch of nervous factors like uh, basically altered nociception because of like uh, cholecystokinin related changes in pain threshold, local nerve damage, peripheral and central nerve sensitization, all of these can lead to the pain or ab chronic abdominal pain in chronic pancreatitis. There are secondary pain which are associated due to local or systemic level complications. So one of the most uh, common complications are uh, obstruction of the bile duct, peptic ulcer uh, due to the lack of blood flow, bacterial overgrowth due to the changes in gastric motility, small bowel strictures that ha that happens after acute pancreatitis. All these factors can lead to severe pain in chronic pancreatitis. If you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, subscribe now. So let us now compare acute pancreatitis with the chronic pancreatitis. So in case of acute pancreatitis, we can see the pancreatic head here, pancreatic tail here. This is adjacent to the duodenum, gallbladder is here, liver and stomach can be seen in this picture. So in case of acute pancreatitis, the digestive enzymes and uh, basically hormonal secretion ability of the pancreas is compromised. There are localized inflammation in the pancreas. It might occur for short term duration and might reoccur in, in, in future based on the cause. So basically the major cause of acute pancreatitis is also alcoholism uh, 
biliary obstruction. There could be gallbladder stones that might lead to obstruction of the gall gallbladder. And basically, there could be traumatic injuries and infections, especially mums and um, other viruses like Coxsackie virus can lead to acute pancreatitis. Metabolic disorders can also lead to acute pancreatitis. Alongside that, ischemia and genetic factors could be underlying acute pancreatitis. So the clinical presentation of acute pancreatitis is intense epigastric pain. Pain can radiate to the back, vomiting, abdominal tenderness, low-grade fever, trachycardia, etc. So the diagnosis is based on all these clinical symptoms and the serum amylase level. So the serum amylase would be abnormally high in this case. Let's talk about the pathophysiology of acute and chronic pancreatitis uh, in, in a subsequent manner. So this is the pancreas. If we cut a cross section across it, we would see the um, endocrine pancreas. Here is the exocrine pancreas. So these are the acinar cells and there are the ducts. So these acinar cells have zymosin granules which are basically containing enzymes in an inactive format. Pancreatic juice is basically water and enzymes. It contains pancreatic amylase, lipase and many other enzymes. So all these things are released in the duct. Also hormones are released by the endocrine part of the pancreas. Now what happens is in case of acute pancreatitis or injury which eventually might lead to chronic pancreatitis there is a leakage of all these enzymes. So one of the thing is basically pancreatic amylase. It breaks down polysaccharides into monosaccharides. In normal situation it is released in the ducts but in acute pancreatitis where there is a damage in these acinar cells there could be release of these enzymes in a premature format in a premature time in the near vicinity that can damage the nearby tissue especially proteases and lipases which are released also from these acinar cells could be quite damaging for the pancreas and now we can understand why there is an increase in serum amylase or lipase level in case of acute pancreatitis. Now there are many other molecular factors which are associated with uh, acute pancreatitis. Alcohol, bile acid and cholecystokinin are associated with it. All these things lead to an opening of the IP3 receptor on the endoplasmic reticulum membrane. This leads to a calcium ion increase. Eventually, ORI1 channel is opened which further lead to calcium ion increase. So overall there is a calcium overload. So the molecular pathology involves a calcium overload into the acinar cells that lead to opening of the MPTP pores in the mitochondria and that ultimately reduces the mitochondrial membrane potential. So what would happen if the mitochondrial membrane potential is altered? There would be no ATP generation. So ATP depletion is a predominant cause. All these things lead to a problem in these acinar cells and acinar cells get uh, damaged they eventually undergo necrosis. Now, let's talk about the overview of the molecular pathology. Uh, so basically, premature trypsinogen activation, dysfunctional calcium signaling, impaired autophagy, endoplasmic reticulum stress, unfolded protein response, mitochondrial dysfunction, all of these factors in combination can be the molecular pathology of acute pancreatitis. All of these might not be present in all the patients. Now let's talk about the chronic pancreatitis. In chronic pancreatitis what happens is there could be repetitive bouts of acute pancreatitis. In this case what happens is basically there are um, uh, stillet cells. They accumulate around these acinar cells. There could be infiltration of polymorphonuclear cells such as neutrophils. There could be also macrophage in invasion. And if there is a repetitive ulcer, there would be fibrosis. So in chronic pancreatitis, fibrosis is pretty common. Hypoxia, uh, invasion of the mononuclear uh, cells, oxidative stress, all of these things are underlying molecular pathology of the chronic pancreatitis. So let's talk about other aspects so duct obstruction pancreatic duct hypertension all of these things might lead to pain and other complications in the chronic pancreatitis
So acute pancreatitis can be detected by the basis of pancreatic amylase and pancreatic lipase levels. And obviously, sometimes imaging results would all also be helpful, such as USG-based Im imaging or also arterial blood glass measurement could be useful. But diagnosis of chronic pancreatitis is mostly dependent on imaging-based studies. Uh, in this case, what happens is there is a endoscopic uh, apparatus which is placed through the duodenum and there is a contrast media which is filling the duct and then it is visualized. So basically a leg chain of leg appearance is a characteristics of chronic pancreatitis. So one can see this particular image uh, it exactly depict, depicts the cha chain of leg appearance. So this is known as endoscopic retrograde uh, cholangiopancreatography, which is quite difficult to pronounce anyway, but it's known as ERCP procedure. Other uh, imaging procedures include MRI imaging, which can show calcifications in case of chronic pancreatitis patients. You can see the red arrow depicting calcifications. Also, abnor abdominal CT can also be an alternative for this kind of MRI imaging. It all depends on the price. Pseudocyst or calcifications can be easily detected using CT scans. Now, there are diagnostic criteria for chronic pancreatitis. So obviously there would be epigastric and abdominal pain and there could be increase in amylase or lipase or there might not be also increase in amylase or lipase. So that's variable part. But alongside that criteria one, either of these next criteria has to be met. Either there could be radiological imaging based evidences which would show the uh, chain of leg appearance or this kind of like pancreatic duct swelling and all this kind of thing. Now basically the histological proof is very rare but sometimes when there are endoscopic biopsy happening in that case basically um, histological evidences are possible to obtain. So in this case a portion of the pancreas is taken out, sectioned, paraffin embedded and sectioned and then imaged. And basically, this looks like this. So in normal situations, these are the lobules and you can see the duct where the asterisks are placed. Now, as the disease progress, the ducts would be dilated. And eventually, there could be complete atrophy of the acinar cells, though there would be no lobules. So these are some uh, histopathological findings. But these are the rare criteria of diagnosis. So what are the treatment of acute and chronic pancreatitis. So basically, supportive care, IV fluid for hydration, aggressive, hi, hi, aggressive hydration is required, analgesia, basically pain management, uh, then antiemetics, and underlying cause has to be treated. So in many of the cases, acute pancreatitis is happening due to basically um, gallstones, so that has to be removed. Alcohol and cigarette smoking should be totally prevented and nutritional support should be provided. In case of chronic pancreatitis as well, lifestyle modification is the key thing. Then pain can be managed with opioids, NSAIDs, etc. But sometimes surgical in intervention is really required based on the status. Then dietary management comprising low fat diet and frequent small meals, these things has to be taken care of. One of the important thing that can be done is pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy to aid the digestion process. And since the pancreas and its function is compromised in long-term chronic pancreatitis, so there, that might lead to development of diabetes and many other problems in the patient. So those aspects has to be managed simultaneously. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in next video.